Morning, I'm Steve Thomas, the Vice President of UNIDEV. We've been to three previous NWLB events to do have some courses and do a little bit of work with the members and association affiliates on internet, web marketing, anything that's dealing with analytics, data, things that might be on the website. And we requested this year to do a presentation on using video. I think everybody knows that video obviously is becoming one of the strongest uh, marketing mediums that exist today, correct? So. I take a show of hands, how many people are using videos in the marketing right now, even if it's a simple handheld video? Okay, right. great. Right. How many people think that they're uh, going to be using video in the near future for the presentation? Okay. That's what we like to see. Good. Okay, get ready then. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. so oh, just like to say, our group, we are shooting three videos, so if you've done them, like Barbara here, and had a blast, come back and shoot another one. We're at group 1005, just shooting three videos for everyone. All right, and Barb, I think you're going to get discovered by this, so I really yeah. Okay, on behalf of NWFB, we welcome you to this session. Uh, we have a lot of familiar faces here that I've seen in the last couple of years, and also some new people. Welcome. Uh, we run very casual give-and-take sessions. If you have questions, please raise your hand. We'll try and go through a lot of those over here. If it gets too far down the rabbit hole, then we're going to ask to meet with you maybe afterwards, have a more private conversation. But we're here all day today, and if we can answer any of your questions about the internet, web marketing, the website, the use of video, etc., it'd be our pleasure. That's why we're here. Uh, on behalf of NWFA, we also ask you, if you haven't yet, to please download this app to help you keep up to date with what's going on with the uh, events here at the Expo. And of course, anything you want to share on social media, the hashtag is NWFA Expo, and I'm sure they appreciate getting the word out of that as well. Okay. All right. Well, here's a rundown of what we're going to cover this morning. Um, using video marketing to get leads. Who doesn't want that? Using videos to build your brand. Employing your smartphone as a tool. Raise your hand if your smartphone is out right now and in your hand or very nearby. Awesome. Well, you've already, you're halfway there. You've got the power in your hands. That's a scary thought, but we're going to show you how to use that. And then, of course, different video platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, and Vine. Right. What's really funny about this presentation, uh, I was actually making changes to it this morning, as Angel knows is more value of my activity on a regular basis anyway, because there's so much more that just happened in the past couple of weeks about using video. I mean, between Periscope and Meerkat, some of the live streaming technologies have just come into really popular use, we're going to cover a little bit about as well today. Uh, this is an ever-changing world, and it's something to really keep your eye on, because your customers are video customers, we'll talk about that here today. Also, we have a special guest with us today. Kevin Harvell is with us from St. Louis Tech Talk. He's going to be filming this video. And by the way, Kevin actually makes videos. So he's here in St. Louis. Uh, we use him as a partner in a lot of environments. If you have any questions about production or ideas on how you can make your videos better, uh, Kevin's at our booth as well. Please stop by booth 1005. We'd be very happy to answer any production <coughs> questions for you as well. Kevin, I just volunteer you. I hope it's still okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, a little bit about who we are. Uh, our company is Unidev. We have been a partner with NWFA, I think, for five years now. We've uh, appeared in the last four presentations of the expo and we've done some marketing tips, worked with the individual members on things that they might have questions about their own site or to help improve their business. Uh, we give generously our time to the group here. We really like the uh, camaraderie and, and the teamwork we see within the different groups that come to NWFA. Our company's been around for 25 years, which is quite a while. Yeah, even before, in a lot of cases, I think Al Gore invented the internet right about then. <laughs> it was pretty close to that time period. Uh, we're a strange company. We are a Google partner on one side, which means we're really geeky about what goes on with search and all the things that Google talks about being important. On the other side of the coin, we're also a Microsoft partner. We work with IBM and other technology firms. So we're one of those companies that has really a, uh, you know, foot really in both worlds. I guess for you guys, it would be, you know, someone who does design and also swings a hammer, right? But we're in the same kind of environment. We do a lot of design work in, uh, in web marketing, and we also do an awful lot of work on the technology side. We're nationwide in our exposure. We're over 50 people, a lot of different disciplines, and again, we're thrilled to be here. All right. There are a multitude of ways to use video, so here are just a few. As far as you know, getting the brand out there for your specific company, you can use it for celebrations. Say someone at work is having a work anniversary or a birthday, or you're celebrating a big win at work. 
uh, outreach, if you're looking for new ways to reach out to customers, comments, <coughs> friends, um, culture. That's a big one. We really try to embrace that to really show that we're, we're humans. While we are a tech company, there are humans on the back end of that. Testimonials are so incredibly powerful. Having someone just speak so positively about you and your brand, I don't think you could really ask for anything more. So capturing that on video is, you know, that's sort of yeah, right. And following on with that too, if anybody came from the 2020 session next door, you heard about millennials, right? And how millennials are moving in the marketplace. They don't read newspapers. They don't watch television, they don't television. If they do, they skip through all the ads. Where do they go to get their advice on what they want to do in the next project? And they're moving very strongly into this marketplace. Well, they go online, they share that information from their peer group. And testimonials are very persuasive too, especially if a, especially a video testimonial where you're actually seeing someone in person who's identifying that what they're wanting to accomplish, what they're wanting to buy, can be accomplished by your company. So not only is that popular among the, uh, you know, because my, my mom's on Facebook, so I say it's kind of for the quilting set at this point in time. But not only is it for the quilting set, it's also for the generation of consumers that are coming into the marketplace, making these decisions, remodeling their homes, et cetera, which you're really trying to be uh, appealing to, and that would be the Absolutely. Um, and those testimonials, again, are so powerful. If anyone was at the keynote yesterday, my favorite part of that, besides Ozzy and John and Taylor and everyone, was the short video segments where people were saying, you know, why are you so passionate about the hardwood floor industry? Hearing people's actual stories, it was so inspiring to me and it was so motivating and it was so simple. And that is something that obviously stuck with me, so I would highly encourage that as well. Events, of course, any event, whether you are attending, exhibiting, if your company is hosting an event, shoot a video about it, capture it just like we're doing right now. New products and services. What better way to showcase something that you're doing by capturing it on video? Because we are such a DIY, how to, we YouTube things. When YouTube goes from becoming a noun to a verb, you know that things are getting real. And it's like that is where all of the information is. And of course, promotions. We practice what we preach. And we're going to show you a couple of videos here this morning. We're actually going to spare you that, uh, that pain and suffering, possibly because we could get the Wi-Fi to work in here. But we do practice what we preach. We've got a very strong video channel on Vimeo. We have a very strong video channel on YouTube. We have videos that uh, have over 10,000 views on them, especially on educational components like that. And this is kind of a slice of life in a lot of things that we do. You notice that Angela stars in a lot of these for some reason. I'm not really sure how she got it. Sick of my face by the end. Yeah, it all works well. But we really do. We, we capture small celebrations. You know, when we hit a big goal on Twitter, you of us decided, what better way to celebrate than a dance party? So we did. Um, and we do things like, um, Pat, actually one of our members who's back here, one of our project managers, no big deal, but over 35,000 views on a live video streaming tutorial. Incredibly powerful. And things like celebrating a, a, someone's one year anniversary. That's a big company culture thing, and it makes people feel very special. Yeah, our, our purpose today really is to give you a little bit of a structure on, you know, because if you say, well, actually, I want to shoot videos, right? And you start walking out there, what do I shoot a video about? You know, what kind of content is going to make sense? Uh, am I shooting it just a shooter? Am I really doing this with the purpose of driving traffic to my website? How do I know there's a moral line from all this? So we're giving you a little general exposure right now, but that's really what we want to concentrate today is on how to put a structure together so that you can actually use videos in order to drive your content strategy and then have your content strategy drive more traffic to your website and hopefully then with the right tools in place drive more conversions. Okay? So uh, this is a video today. We like to look at this as uh, everything we do on our content marketing strategy. And I think a video is just more content. You know, the uh, I guess because of how we're wired, you know, back when we were uh, pre-written language, we were all doing everything visually, right? People were giving you sign language, they were explaining things. If there was a cheetah in the woods about to kill somebody, they'd point to it and say, hey, look, right? So we're all visually based. We're looking for visual cues. We're using really video in the same way today on the internet. Studies have shown that videos are 600 times more effective at communicating a message and remaining in someone's memory than the written word and the text on a website. And especially today, the videos are climbing aggressively in the way that they're being used on mobile phones. And who likes to read a long text off their mobile device? I didn't see any hands. Okay, I appreciate that. Nobody does. But watching a video on your mobile device and your smartphone is very natural, right? So we look at this as just a content strategy, and we try and divide our content at Unidev into three different primary categories. 
we want to drive sales today, no question about it. We've got a new product we're trying to show. If we've got a, uh, we have a special or an offering that we're involved with, then we certainly want to try and drive sales today. So part of our content strategy is always on how we drive new sales today. But then a second part of our content strategy is what our CEO calls putting out the big footprint. And that's creating an entire basis online that is more foundational, that we're raising a brand awareness. And somebody might not find the content we've written today. They might, might probably find it until they're actually doing an active keyword search for the service we provide or for the opportunities we have with an organization. But eventually, over time, what you put online has a lot of value. And that's the same way with videos. The longer they're on there, there's a long tail to them. The longer they're on there, the more views you're gonna get, the more important that becomes, and the more powerful that you become in search engines. So we create a lot of our content with the idea that we're using it for SEO, we're using it for search engine optimization, we're using it for reputation, and we're also using it to raise brand awareness. But that brand awareness can take time, so you're putting that foundation together and letting that build as you go. The other part of this whole is cultural. Like you saw, we had a celebration of one year anniversary. Hey, I don't know about you all, but we're in a highly competitive business. <clears throat> it's very hard, very hard to hire really bright, skilled developers today. And it's getting more challenging as time goes on. And we're blessed to have over 50 of them because we really work hard to create a right environment for people to work in. It'll be a friendly place to work. Really realize the value of our employees. But also because we're attracting people by showing those slices of life within the organization itself. Celebrating a birthday, having a uh, decorate your desk contest for the holidays, uh, celebrating an anniversary with someone at work, charity events we might attend, promotions we do. Now, we're not just creating those events. <clears throat> those things aren't happening just to create a video. But the video is happening just because we're creating those events. Does that make sense? So when we're celebrating an anniversary, when we're serving cake, when we're doing high fives because we passed a certain goal on social media in one of our meetings, shoot, we shoot a short clip of that, and for larger presentations, we shoot a longer clip, and it becomes part of the culture, and it becomes part of the way we attract people into the organization. And again, video has an extremely long life. When you're shooting videos, realize that the viewpoint on this, especially if you use it right in getting it out to your, uh, to your population, to your community, it's going to have a very long life and continue to have value for you. All right. Well, it wouldn't be a nice presentation on a PowerPoint without some data. So we've got numbers here. Uh, just This is showing some video marketing trends in 2015. And we can make sure everyone gets a copy of this if you can't see some of the numbers. But things like 65% of video viewers watch more than three quarters of a video. Not bad. But you kind of want to make your video short, sweet, and concise so people watch the entire thing. Um, of marketing professionals worldwide name video as the type of content with the best ROI. That's over half. That's fantastic. Also, 33% of tablet owners watch, watch one hour of video per day on their device. So people are watching. They are tuning in. So we just encourage you to, if you've got something to say, push it out there because there will be visitors for you. And by the way, this, cre this trend continues to increase. I think mean, what you're going to find is that the vast majority of content that is absorbed online in the near future is going to be on the mobile device, whether a tablet or on a smartphone, and it's certainly going to be in a video format, or at least in the image format, all the way up and down. And we've got some data to show you some of those points as well. How many people are here for our B2B? This is the business, okay? And how many people deal directly with consumers? How many trying to get the B2C going on? Okay. B2C, uh, B2C, the world are huge trends. We actually work with both types of organizations. We presented last year on the business of consumer component using images, especially with Pinterest, and how to get some of the content shown there. Uh, and we really tried to paint the picture of, you know, the husband and wife, and they're sitting on the couch on a Sunday morning, she's scrolling through the iPad, she's saying, oh honey, look at this. When we redo the dining room, we do redo the living room, when we do redo the bath, here are the things that I want to have going on, right? And she's finding these, then they're sitting and looking at them, both in images and today, both in, uh, actually in videos, right? So there's a lot of the, a lot of the components that are out here you might think about as competitors if you're dealing with B2C. A lot of the videos people are using today are do-it-yourself, right? Well, why would you want to ever participate in the do-it-yourself world? Why would you want to participate in telling consumers how they can do some things themselves? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I know, for example, in the uh, some of our customers we deal with are HVAC and plumbing. They don't want to come unplug a toilet. They don't want to come change somebody's filter. There's no value in that. They want to really, though, be a resource for their customers when they do have a challenge or when they do have a question of a bigger, they want to gain that trust. They want to gain that confidence. 
so they found ways to make sure that our content strategy we worked with them on developing a way that they're messaging themselves as a leader and by the way as a trusted community representative because almost all of your businesses if you're b2c you got a focused community you're trying to deal with you have zip codes you have a city you have a region you can really get people's attention and become an authority when you really concentrate your attention on what do I want to give to my, my customers, my prospects, and how do I want to deliver that to them to really try and help them? So these numbers are really impressive and continue to grow over time. B2B wise, new piece of machinery, uh, new approach, training videos, we do a lot of learning management system uh, development as well. Training videos that you might want to put on your website for your customers, also very important components as well. You know, giving your customers, B2B customers, what they need online they call you when they really need one of your representatives or call you when they're ready to make that purchase decision, right? Is a very important component. And videos can, in a lot of cases, educate them and get them to that awareness point when they're really ready to make that decision. All right, so we just like to share a couple fun facts here. So year over year, smartphone and tablet views more than doubled, showing over 114% increase. Kind of a big deal. Uh, next up, there were over 89.7 million smartphone video viewers in the U.S. in 2014. That total is about half of the size of the overall digital video audience. <coughs> and in quarter three of 2014, smartphone and tablet views made up 30% of all video plays. And that's a 20% increase of Q2. So as you can tell, I mean, numbers are just going up. So having a presence on video, it's not a question of should I do it, it's I need to be doing it, and how can I be doing it better? And these are not all, hey, Charlie, left my finger. I mean, they're not all fun YouTube videos are going on with, though of course there's a big portion of that that are geared towards uh, fun entertainment. The big structure of this is really how consumers are using videos in order to educate themselves. Okay, so we're talking about how videos work real quick. Uh, just to go take you through the life cycle on this, let's say that someone is trying to, uh, if I'm remodeling the home, you know, okay, I want to get wood flooring in here. I want to see, is this hard to maintain? Is it hard to take care of? How do I know whether I'm going to be able to really maintain this beautiful look I have today? Consumers have a lot of questions about wood floors. I mean, I think we heard over next door that 44% of consumers like hardwood flooring, but that 44% of consumers that like hardwood flooring have a lot of questions. You know, of course, the media raising some of them today, but mainly more about care and, and how long is it going to last? What issues am I going to run in with, etc.? Videos are a really great way for people to search the answers to those questions. And again, I'll talk about search engine in a second here, but to search those answers to those questions, once they find what they're looking for, it's very easy for them to engage in images and even easier for them to engage in videos. We have analytics that prove that even our own business, that videos, whether we post them in Facebook or whether we post them in other uh, medium, really bring more views and longer traction than any other method we use in order to get our message out. So they find those videos, they engage in those videos, and in a lot of cases, then they save them, and what else do they do? Especially with the generation that's really trying to get feedback from their own peers, to share. So sharing those videos on Facebook, sharing those videos on Twitter, sharing those videos, liking something and sharing it on their own profile, on Vine in some cases, which we'll talk about how to use that as well, but then also on YouTube, we're a very important part of the consumer cycle today on making a decision to make a buy. And I think that share part is so important, Steve, because you want to have a good product that people can't wait to share. Just having it is, is fine, but the minute you have the possibility that you want to share it with someone, why do you want to share it with them? And most importantly, being the video that gets shared. You want to position yourself as an authority. Okay, any questions so far? Is this, let me ask, is this going in the direction you all want it to, or are you getting information out of this that, that you're thinking of so far? Okay, any questions so far on where we are, what we're doing, or can we move on? We have a handout of PowerPoint. We do not have a handout, but I'm happy to email it to you. We have our contact information at the end. We're happy to send it to you. So either grab one of our cards, probably yours, but grab one of our cards, and, uh, and we also have the link at the very end. We're very happy to send it to the PowerPoint. And again, you've been answering questions. OK, how many works again? We're on page two of this. So the new video, the shares and the likes, the click through the source, generate leads. None of us are building videos when you're doing B2B just because, gosh, we should fun to shoot a video about this when you're really doing this content strategy. You're building it with a purpose in mind. And your idea really, in our point of view, is to think conversions. You want to think about when I bring somebody to that video and they click on that video, they watch that video, what do I want them to do next? What do I want them to do next? That's a very important element of this. So whether it's embedding what we call a call to action, the CTA, whether it's embedding a call to action at the end of the video itself, 
or whether it's having a call to action on the page with the video is a very important element. And through analytics, you can track that. And every one of the tools we're talking about has run analytics. Facebook has analytics, YouTube has analytics, and of course Google has analytics. They cover the world with that. So in working on this whole component, we always think conversions. And we look at our videos as critically as we look as anything else. We look at our videos like you'd look at a salesperson. If you've got salesmen out there and you're not getting the numbers from them, then you critically think about how can I improve the performance of a salesman, or how can I change directions and go in a new direction, right? All of your content strategies are the same thing. It's not working. You need to be thinking about conversions and moving to the next level with it. And this is all you. Oh, I'm so excited about this. All right, uh, this is the video production process. I swear by this. I use this not just for video, but for life when I'm planning a big event. Basically, take a triangle, flip it upside down. With this formula, you will eliminate so much stress after you shoot your video. Basically, pre-production, do your homework. Plan for everything that could possibly happen. Plan for things to not always go that way, but the more research and homework, and whether it's location scouting, tightening up the script, getting your set under control, getting props handled, getting the topic finalized, all that needs to be done in the beginning. When that is done, that will whittle down some of the work and time with the actual production process. Because, I'm sure like Kevin knows, nothing ever goes as planned when you're shooting video. Ever. So you have to have that sort of mentality of, I'm going to go by this plan, expect for things like, oh gosh, weather is an element. Someone could get sick who's supposed to be in your video. You could a lose a blip, a quick crash video. That happened to us yesterday. We were shooting, the video came down on us. Yeah. Fun fact. But um, yeah, so that'll definitely make your production process a lot more smooth and fun. And then of course, having done all of your homework at the beginning, having put everything in the can, as they say in Hollywood, that's when everything is done. Post-production, which is all of the editing and the effects and putting it together, and like Steve said, when you're putting it on YouTube, you're going to want to have it properly tagged with keywords and metadata, making it easily searchable. That would make post-production a breeze yeah. in a perfect world. But honestly, this formula, you guys, I use it for everything. We were planning how we were going to be exhibiting here this year. We had a huge plan of, okay, we need all X, Y, and Z in place. Production, I'd say the expo is going darn well. Post-production, if we can wind down in one piece, nobody gets hurt, we've done our job. So yes, this, of all things, remember this and use it. You put your marketing down on of this, too, for example, yeah. three. Uh, if you're going to shoot a video, it's always good to know if you're going to put it on YouTube, what should the title be on the YouTube video, right? And there are ways you can actually do searches on YouTube. We'll show that we'll get that in a second. But think in terms of the keywords you're going to utilize for your web presence with us. Think in terms of, you know, are you going to localize it? Are you going to generalize it? Are you going to go after a specific aspect of your business or are you going to make it more general? Right? Search the keywords on the tools you're going to be placing it on. So you're getting your marketing homework done in the very beginning transcripting your presentation, whether you're using a tool for that or whether you're doing it manually, and having that content available that you can put on the website helps in a lot of cases too. And at the end of the post-production, you've got to have a marketing strategy to get out there. You know, with the, the tree, the video that's made in the forest that falls, and no, I don't something like that. But the idea is, if no one sees your video, then what good did it do to build it in the first place? So you want to create your whole network in your own company on how you're going to share this information. <coughs> get your advocates together and share it for you as well. So everything Angela said about setting this up is absolutely 100% true, but put your marketing hat on with it too, because that's why you're doing this. All okay. right, so there will never, ever, ever, ever be a shortage of content. Um, everyone's got a story here, everybody. Um, there is something unique and special about you and your business and all of your employees there, so why not celebrate that? Um, here are just a couple hot topics if you want to emphasize that when you're pushing out a video. You can highlight if it's a family business, which I believe many are here, and that's a great quality. People like that, they can relate to it, and it humanizes you. Your team, you've got to celebrate your employees. Um, if anyone heard John Mosella talk yesterday, just really celebrating and motivating and inspiring your team the way he does with his players will leverage you. Customers. You've got to shout out to your customers. That is why we do things. Our motto at UNED is it's all about you. The letter you. We, we love to showcase other people, and we, we just think if you're doing something great, let us be your cheerleader and push it out to the world. Products. Anything new that you're rolling out, a new laminate, a new finish, a new location perhaps, that is definitely worthy of the story. <coughs> we 
love a good before and after. I'm not gonna lie. So why not capture that? I mean, you are all in such a visual, you know, industry. People are usually coming to you, I'm guessing, with, oh, I need my floors, I need some help, here's what they look like now, here's what I want them to look like. So capture that process, because the better you look in that after, that's going to leverage you and your business. And then community. I mean, everyone here is involved. We are a community here right now that all of you came together from all over the world, basically, and we're all in one place together. And charity events can definitely fall into that as well. And we have uh, one of our clients who work with us in the uh, funding business. Now, they go to kind of an extreme on celebrating their people. They get like, uh, they get like 18 trucks out there. And they actually do a uh, shoot every year for their calendar. They call the Men of Spingler. And so they have their guys actually in very, you know, very unique shots. Uh, like in a bathtub in Artville here in St. Louis and crazy stuff. But when they distribute that catalog, they track their analytics and it spikes through the roof as far as people coming to the website. Uh, so they're very in touch with things like that. If you're in the community. They're involved with local charities with the, uh, the Breast Cancer Awareness Society here in St. Louis. And they're also very involved in the community and supporting, in their case, the local fire stations, the local schools, and making sure that there's, they're doing contests and things that are shout outs to that. So they know the community they live in. They know that their customers share those same school districts, same zip codes, uh, same fire departments. They know where that affinity lies, and they do what they can to make sure that they represent that community as part of the larger sense. Does that make sense? So they're really trying to sponsor activities within a the group there. Okay, getting started. This is actually your. All right. So we can't say enough about That's not actually perfect. That is not. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, start with the message that's going to capture your audience. You never want to push something out there, give someone a video that has nothing to do with them and their industry because you'll get them thinking, why was this sent to me? And then they'll be making that face, and that doesn't make you look good. Um, but there are just a couple things to help you craft that message. Have a strong script, have a powerful message, and pull from any of those topics we mentioned before, a celebration, a new product, involvement in the community. Memorable imagery is we are the most visual society around. I mean, I can't say enough about, like Steve said, videos get the most traction. And photos are second to that. So we, we need to look at something, we need to relate to it, and having something that sticks out in your mind, like I just love this one, that's an example. Um, and we can't stress enough the prepare and over prepare. That's the big pre underneath that triangle I showed you before. Yes, we can't say enough, do your homework. Yeah, and I, by creating an organized story, what Angela is not talking about is you have to hire a script writer and you have to pull this out. But you really want to think about three different things. You want, you want to think about what is the message you're trying to communicate, right? What is the message you're trying to communicate? And maybe even before that, who is the audience that you're going to want to create that message for? And then once you know who you want to talk to, and then you have the message ready, then how are you going to know if they've read that? What do you want them to do when they see that? Where do you want them to go next? Because again, you're building this from B to B. So it's who you're talking to, what is the message, and how are you going to tell if they got there? What do you want them to do when they get there? So you need some sort of action after that in order to really indicate whether or not your message is getting through clearly. Does that make sense? Okay. Real part, yeah, real part of knowing your audience is very important. I mean, these, both these videos got an awful lot of views on YouTube from the last time I saw, but I'd say they're probably different audiences intended on those, right? So, you know, this is more B to C, that's more B to B, right? I don't know, I can't get those kinds of... Anyway, the, the, whole, the whole idea would be, you really need to know who you're appealing to. Is this something that's for a homeowner? Is it something for uh, other people in the industry? I mean, you're out there with your own product, too, like we were talking you know, just a few seconds ago about, I really like this particular product, I want to use that in my house. Well, I would rather hear you all tell me what your favorite products are than anybody. I mean, if you've got products you really like and you're demoing how that looks on your floors or you're demoing how that works on your customers' floors and you say, hey, I put my stamp of approval on this, hey, I'm happy so well, I'm ready to roll, but I want to find out more about what's important to you as a subject matter expert. So don't be afraid to do that, but keep in mind who your audience is. They're very different sometimes. Video production process? We actually should. Kevin, uh, Kevin will be here for questions later. But, uh, um, but basically, if you remember the YouTube page that Steve pulled up with just a variety of videos that we have, that is an example of utilizing slice of life for some of those fun little quick videos that we shot a few on smartphones. 
or for larger productions, we've sort of gone down the road here, and you can go from, you know, like I said, the small smartphone ones to a medium kind of in-house one, whether it's an event, a testimony, a presentation, or fully produced. And that is if you're wanting to go on location, hire a full camera crew. Really, I mean, that one, it's going to be more costly, but it's going to be more effective, and the quality will be kicked up about 100 notches. Drones, drones flying over your facility are not something you do as a slice of life video, right? Not so, so much, unless you have a drone handy. Uh, but again, there is so much to choose from here. All of these are, are doable. And it's just sort of a matter of what, which one do you want to jump in with. Figure out, you know, if you are just starting out, jump in with some slice of life and experience, experiment a little bit. And capture things on your phones. Get comfortable learning that. If you're not, talk to people that are. If you're trying to leverage video and you're just not quite sure where to start, obviously you come talk to us, but do a little research maybe with local production companies in your neighborhood or in your city or just ask around. You have to be willing to ask because people are very, very willing to share. Yeah, just real quick, in thinking about this, how many people are doing this simple slice of life video right now for their business? Everybody kind of using a smartphone and things. How many people are now, when you go to this level, think about interviews where you might have, for example, we work with a lot of legal firms and you're going to have a video interview of each one of their attorneys that's going to go on a profile page. You don't necessarily want that to be something too casual, right? That's a more formal presentation, but not again real crazy, not real expensive. How many people are doing more of that kind of setup? Where people are kind of, okay, cool. And has anybody gone to the level of really creating really full-blown videos and, and uh, you know, almost movie quality they're using for their business at all? Anyone doing that at this point in time? Okay. Sorry, Kevin, I can get police out of that. <laughs> but sincerely, people, don't think people expect this nowadays? I mean, when you're looking at a video and you see that it's been kind of shot casually by a group of people, don't you accept it as very real? I mean, even if the sound in some cases is a little less than perfect, and even if the backdrop has got a sticker on a window, it's real, real, isn't it? I mean, you're not really looking, you're not, it's not a TV series, it's not Game of Thrones. You're not trying to get this to a mass, mass, mass of audiences and get critical review. What you're trying to do is get people to react to you, react to the video, and come back for conversion. So thinking in terms of having the easy, a slice of life kind of thing is what we really produce the majority of our videos. And, you know, videos like that get tens and tens of thousands of views over time. If the subject is right, if you're appealing to the right audience, if the quality is good enough to get somebody through it, then it'll work out great. Now, real quick in this, talk about length of time. How many people would love to sit here and watch a 20-minute video? How many wouldn't mind watching a minute or a two-minute long video? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you got the phone, you're in the car, you're walking down the hallway, you're sitting at your booth, you're doing what you're on the couch. A minute or a two-minute video, a little snippet of something that comes across, is plenty today. Because the goal is not to give everybody 100% of the information they want in a lot of cases. I mean, you're really trying to drive them somewhere else, right? They see a little snippet online. They see a little snippet on Facebook. The purpose of that is a tool to take them to your website or to your YouTube site, where they can actually then see the full version if they want to. They can actually find out more. They can see your more, more carefully produced, your longer produced video at that point in time. So think in terms of how you're using this, but short counts, being brief, being to the point, really counts. Yeah, there's such a, an element to having a teaser, I would say. Um, for example, some of our events, we host local events called the Speaker Series. And what we do is we capture the entire event but I love grabbing shots of the food, of people mingling, of just all of the action, putting it together to be maybe a minute, minute and a half of a trailer, and using that as a teaser, saying, well, you missed it, but here's sort of a highlight. Put something out there that's going to make them want to come, want to watch a full video, which you can certainly make accessible if you want, but um, it's, just, it's having that little teaser, which is so <coughs> powerful, capturing highlights in short, sweet, and concise, I would say is definitely the name of the game. I think we've probably covered this point enough. Everybody knows that smartphones and tablets are continuing to increase. And now with smartwatches, pretty soon you'll be shooting videos from your wristwatch, right? Uh, I don't know. You might. And also then the smartphone spans and things are coming on. Technology is becoming wearable. It's becoming affordable. It's the whole point of the slide. It's something you're going to have on you at all times. Your smartphone is that tool. I mean, it's just as important a tool in your tool belt as anything else that you're using today in order to be customer satisfied. Okay, you want to talk about the user searches here? Uh, sure, sure. So this is just a classic example. We were doing a little bit of research, and simply in YouTube, we type in wood flooring, and we just wanted to see what pops up. And all this information up here, that is what Steve was talking to earlier about having your video properly tagged. So you have the power. You are actually creating all of the content that people see up there. 
So make sure that, that it's relevant. You don't need to write a whole biography of your company. Quick snippets of, of who you are and what that video is about. Right, this content is very important. If you're looking at some of the keywords you're picking up here, you've got 2015, it's actually the content itself. Part of wood flooring is actually the content itself. So thinking about how you label these is important. And you've got different types of video here too. I mean, on the very top, you've got star power. This, you know, someone who's a star, right? Property Brothers, no matter what they put out, it's always going to be about Property Brothers. They're not going to have some other product and say, well, yeah, we're the Property Brothers. It starts off with star power, right? If you have star power, use it. If your product is a star, make your product a star. If what you're doing is a star, make that the star. Don't make videos about too much. Make it about one particular thing that you can stand out and tag so that people are going to capture that. Make sense? I'm going to keep going with this. So how best do you use YouTube? Just real quick. YouTube's a great channel. The title, the tagging, the thumbnail that comes from that, you can link it all to your website. Matter of fact, all the videos we're shooting for people uh, yesterday and today, we'll give them a link that they can post it on YouTube and then they can actually have it linked to their own website, their own channels as well. One thing to do is to start using search terms in YouTube if you want to find out how you should title your, uh, your video presentation. If I start to type in W-O, it's a smart search, right? It starts to suggest ideas for me. When I get to wood flooring, or wood floor, then you start to say wood floors, wood flooring, wood floor cleaning, wood floors DIY, and wood floors dark. Those are some of the top keywords that are being searched on, on YouTube. That's why they're coming up in that search bar when you see that. So it's an intelligent search. So one thing to do is before you create, you know, as your pre, as Angela talks about, and the pre, before you start your production, start to think about what you want to title these things by doing searches under different search engines to find out what the most popular searches are. That will help you know what consumers and customers and businesses are really looking for. Okay, make sense? Okay, we talked about earlier, YouTube has analytics. You can actually get inside there and it will tell you what your performance is in for any particular time period, how many subscribers you have at that point in time. And it will show you even the different videos and how many views that you receive from those. And what's really important about this is that when you're looking at your analytics within YouTube, when you're looking at those analytics, this is how you tell who your best salespeople are again, right? These are your salespeople. You need to think about all the videos you're creating, your entire content strategy. Is this it driving business? Are my emails driving business? Am I sending them out newsletters? Are my images on Pinterest driving business? Is my account with house driving business? Are my videos I'm posting on YouTube driving talent, driving traffic, driving business? So your analytics can tell you about all that in the back. And they exist. They're real easy to use. They're free. So you can log in there and actually tell how effective your, your content is getting those done. Uh, same kind of thing will happen with Vimeo as well. There's a lot of wood, wood flooring, wood flooring. You can do a, I can do the search here, but you can actually use the searches on Vimeo. Who's using Vimeo today? Anybody using Vimeo? Okay. Vimeo is another good channel. Uh, again, we think in terms of two different types of people you want to find your content. The prospect who might actually want to buy something from you, number one, right? But then that prospect in a lot of cases is doing what in order to find you. You're using search. You're using Google. You're using other search engines. YouTube's the number two search engine on the planet right now. I'm sorry, in the United States right now, right behind uh, Google, right? Yeah, I think Baidu might be beating it by now in China. But anybody doing business in China where they're actually producing wood floor, putting wood floors down? Okay, anyway. So the whole idea is uh, you want to make sure that on all your channels, spread as many channels as you can manage because you're going to continue to see a growth in video channels because the video is going to continue to become even stronger, right? So if you're, already on, if you're already on Twitter posting your videos, if you're already on Facebook showing people your videos, especially B2C, if you already have a YouTube channel and you're posting on YouTube, you want to extend that to one more level, this would be a great one to consider too. Yes, sir? Um, in most cases, you're putting, putting it on a channel with the intention of spreading it as widely as possible. And the search engine's finding it as well. Right. Yes. Are there channels where you have permission-based viewing where you want to limit access or where you want to charge payment for viewing video? Oh, sure. I'm not sure I'm charging payment for video viewing uh, for that element. I actually could research that before you get back with you on that. But you can lock down a channel to be private. So for Vimeo, for example, you can lock that down as a private channel. A lot of people do that. So they'll have their own, they have their own content they want to share with only their own private community. You'd have to give them a link or a code or something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Greg, are you aware of others that are uh, more permission-based? No. Right? Yeah. So yeah, Vimeo is the channel. We typically would suggest Vimeo for that for most of the customers we're working with. They got, for example, if you're a hospital and you want to share information about uh, hospital-acquired infections, 
and you want to have a private channel, you don't have your own LMS, or you're a small uh, shop of some kind, then you can create a channel and get login permission to your people. Now, that's only as secure as a login permission, of course, but you can do that as your own internal channel. Well, one of the things that triggered this is um, I'm a hardwood flooring inspector. Oh, cool. And again, written reports are helpful. Written reports with photos are more helpful. Written reports with video would be very helpful, but you not only legally but practically want to limit access to that because it's a permission-based system. Absolutely. The, uh, I mean, there are a lot of ways to lock down private community. Yeah, right, right. You don't have that Right, you can create, yeah, you can make videos private basically so that the search engines can't find it is one step, and then more securely is lock down a channel where it's permission based. And what's really funny you mentioned that, we're actually working with a gentleman who does bank inspections, I think is what he's doing. He's building an app where you actually, he wants to embed, there's like, a, I don't know, one of the longest stretches I've ever seen the base of the earth, probably very happy with those and what you have to do as well, right? Uh, but they, he's looking for a way to embed videos into that spreadsheet as well, make an app out of that. So I think there's a lot of work going as far as privatizing that as well. So it could be a tool that people are utilizing in the industry as well. I'd be happy to give this, you his contact information after this would be interesting. But yeah, so that's a great question. Actually, we didn't prepare data on that. That's uh, good. I think he had a question over here. Yes. Yes, please. Do you recommend the uh, paid business video that you know, promo account for businesses or is the free personal one? Um, Vimeo is a traditional channel. You have more controls. There, there are a lot, you know, you, if you go through the whole video world, you've got Vimeo, you've got Hulu, you've got a lot of other ways you can get your message out. If you're going to, it's kind of like on LinkedIn, are you on LinkedIn by chance? Okay, on LinkedIn you can post videos too, right? You can put your blogs. There's a free account on LinkedIn. 99% of the people that I know use LinkedIn in, in a free manner. Same with Vimeo. Most of the people we work with use Vimeo as another way. We don't pay for it as an example. We don't have a control account to get their message out. Now you can, if you go to the pro level, you can lock it down. You can ask to sponsor uh, videos that are on there as well. Uh, you can get more information, more analytics. It's kind of a premium kind of thing where it's free, but there's a premium element to it as well. But the vast majority of the people we use don't use Vimeo as the main way to drive business to their website because YouTube's so huge. You know, YouTube is really the, uh, the inner pound gorilla in the video world still. So if you're, if you're fully exposed on uh, YouTube, you're utilizing that to the fullest, you're actually maximizing the search capabilities on that, then we would suggest Vimeo as another channel. But unless you're doing production quality videos and really trying to drive paid traffic to those, probably not a really good idea to spend a lot of money on Does that make sense? Have you had an experience otherwise? I'd love to hear it since you're like, well, maybe work for you working with Vimeo Premium right now? No? Okay. No, I just looked it up as you were talking and that's all the options. He has Wi-Fi, everybody. So, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you guys want to check your email or something, stop by to this gentleman at the end. But I would say experiment a little bit with video. See what you like about, about the free one. If there are features that are available during the paid, go for it. But honestly, I, I don't know too many people that absolutely have to jump on the paid bandwagon for Vimeo because YouTube sort of runs the video world. Okay, here's Vine. Now, real things about Vine. Uh, Vine puts everything in a channel. This is actually DIY. Uh, that's mustaches. Oh, no, it's actually humor. Uh, but there's a lot of information. You can go through, if you go to anybody on Vine today, using Vine today, okay, when you're, if you happen to use Vine, think about it this way. It is an app. It's incredibly mobile. It's six seconds. And the most popular videos on Vine are loops. Now, what can you do with this? For example, uh, Angela was talking a second ago about having a longer video we might use for other purposes. With Vine, you can go actually through and take clips that you want to have, like here's a, script, here's a scene, here's a scene, here's a scene, here's a scene. You can patch them together so that they make one quick story for you to create your own video. Or if you're at the Grand Canyon, there's six seconds you want to show to everybody in another two hours nobody really wants to see because it's your family vacation. You can take that six seconds out and make that your clip. So Vine allows you to go still shots and combine them into a video, quick video. And they also allow you to use six seconds of any video you're producing and create that as well. A Vine account is free. There, there's another, it's a whole community, just like Facebook and everything else, for a whole community of people that are big on Vine. Vine is very big in sports, very big in humor, uh, very big in social lifestyles. 
the, uh, what we use it for primarily is a really kind of a great teaser. I mean, if you can put something on Vine and you can then uh, link it to bring people back to your main traction site, that's one of the main elements of it. And But also it's really great for slice of life, for humor. And people work very hard on soundtracks on Vine. You'd be surprised how many entertainment videos are out there that the soundtrack is really one of the main attractions for the video itself. Yes, sir? Where, how would I see that? I'm sorry? How would I see that? I mean, is it, is it like a... Like on an email or you can. Or you like can a, you can do it. No, good question. You can use it three different ways. I mean you can take with a Vine video, first of all, anybody who has a Vine subscription can do a search for you. As a matter of fact, this is National Work Morning Association. They have a Vine channel. And they have a Vine channel where they're talking about their training open house. They have a Vine channel where they're showing some of their training elements. Each one of these is only six seconds. So it's kind of a little slice of life. So like I said, it's more of a teaser. But they're tagging that. Uh, Google search sees Vine videos. Vine videos can be something you use as a teaser in an email, like you said, you send somebody and link them to your Vine channel, you have them click on there. But again, most of the time, you, you're going to be dealing with each one of these communities. Like, for you to have a Facebook ad out there, and to try and have a Facebook ad where you don't have a Facebook community is probably not going to be the best use of your resources. I mean, you really want to try and have enough people built up in Facebook so that your, that your video and the elements you're going to put out there are going to be important, right? YouTube is another Google. So posting things in YouTube first is just like put, putting content out in Google. But when you start talking about privatized channels where people have to like you or share with you or link to you, like Vine, and like uh, Facebook as an example, then it becomes a little bit more laborious to actually get your video found by a general community. But both of those can be seen by a general community, but people won't follow you unless you're really, you know, they're, they're associated with you in some way. Does that make sense? So we use them for video, we use them for emails, where we'll link somebody to this. But the main is again, it's a teaser, and I think it's how NWFA uses theirs. So if I just pull up the Google uh, search box, right, if it have it pop up there. If you pull up the Google search box, and if your video is tagged right, and it has the right content to it, and it's supported properly, then yes, it can be seen by the uh, by the search engine. Yes. Did you say in order for somebody to see a Vine video, they have to have a Vine account? For somebody to see a Vine video, they have to be on Vine. For them to follow you as someone who has your videos out there on Vine, to follow you, they have to have a Vine account. All right, now email. It's not, it's not viewable in email, correct? Well, we use, we use videos in email quite a bit, but they link somewhere. Right. And like with, the, like with an email strategy, you're thinking about with emails, now how many people use emails to, to uh, push their business? Newsletters, press, et cetera. The idea behind that is you want to take somebody as a call to action from that video, right? The, I'm uh, uh, sorry, from that email. So the analytics on that are, first of all, am I sending out good emails? Is my list good? The second element of that is are people clicking on my email? Third element of that is are people clicking on the things I have on my email? And video is a big driver of conversion on emails, but you're not playing the video in the email. They're clicking on the video and it's taking them to where they want to go. They're either going to YouTube or to your own website in a lot of cases or where you're trying to drive traffic. Right. Is Vine viewable on email? There are, at this, go ahead. Yeah. You can embed Vine videos on websites as well. And I right. want to believe that there are Vine links that you can share them individually. Yeah. Right. But, but as far as playable in an email? No. Okay. They have to actually click on it. No, at this, now people are working with email templates or email designs that will have videos embedded in the email. But I don't think that's a common practice for anybody to work with that we know of right now. Yes, sir. If I can add to you, I might have worked at WFA and actually do those. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, that's good. Um, Twitter is another place that you can view it. You have a Twitter account or a follow in that way because um, through mine, you can check the box or not for that to go out to uh, Twitter. So, for instance, sitting here in a video education session, I want to be able to post on Twitter a video. You cannot add a video, you can add a photo. And I'll be honest with you, perfectly that I could go to volume because I don't need it that often. And I could have had that go out on Twitter this morning while we're sitting here. Right. And you find you like to run that. So in that way, you can put video on Twitter. Right. So you, you can link. Vine is another way to share. So Vine is a really cool tool, like we said, as a, as a teaser. It's a really cool tool to send a little snippet out there that's going to make people say, oh, I want to see more, right? So it's, it's like, like you just said, thank you for adding that. It's like taking a video that you already have produced or you're producing and finding another way to share that. But there's a goal to that again. And as a marketer, your goal is to drive those people into the destination of that, whether it's your buying account 
So to, you, you don't have to have a line account to be online. You do have to be a line account to start following people online. Now. So you need to sign up and be a member of that. Same as you would have to be on LinkedIn to, to uh, follow or like somebody there. But again, it's free. It's not, a, it's not an issue. Yeah, think of it as, a, as another YouTube, another way to get your video out there. This one just happens to be a lot shorter because it's only six seconds. Um, so did anyone happen to see our email blast? Was Steve and I video in that? Anyone? You what? Anyone Okay, people, yeah, a few people swung by your group and said, hey, we saw your video, because we had that in, okay, Barbara saw, thank you. And um, that's just another way to get your message out there. Again, it's not going to automatically play in, in the email, but we have you click on YouTube, watch the video, and then that's how it's Yeah, we want to go through these the next couple slides a little more quickly so we can answer more questions at the end. But we presented on Pinterest last time. Remember, videos can be on Pinterest. Videos are a big search corner on Pinterest as well. Another place if you're on Pinterest to post your videos. Um, you can push videos on Facebook, and this is the analytics I talked about earlier. If you look at this, is just one little snippet we had from one of our clients. You know, this is the engagement level, right? Normal uh, posts are getting this kind of engagement. Posts with photos are getting this kind of engagement. Posts with videos are getting that kind of engagement. So videos on Facebook are driving three times engagement in some cases as when we're just putting something strictly out as a text post and really almost double in some cases, this one not quite double, but in a lot more engagement from video than even from photography. So think in terms of video being much more engaging than the other elements you're putting out there on Facebook as well. And here's something we talked about Twitter a few seconds ago. I mean, Twitter also has a lot of different ways that you can go through and find videos and check the playlists on that and take you again to YouTube or some other destination or to see the video itself. Okay, this is new. Uh, if you follow things like we do about South by Southwest and all the crazy things happening in internet marketing, uh, there are two new players on, on, the, uh, on the world in video. One is called Meerkat, the other one is called Periscope. They're both Twitter apps. I think both of them work primarily on iPhone today. I don't think anyone's released an Android version, but they're live streaming. I could actually, if you wanted to have a live streaming video, now who's using this so far? Stars, celebrities, uh, Kevin, Carvel, of course. Um, people that are, I mean, the, the NHL is very upset because people are live streaming some of the, the hockey playoff games, right? And they're doing it through Periscope, through Meerkat. So it's a wild, wild west. These are apps, these are tools that, uh, that people are utilizing today in order to have a live streaming video broadcast of what's happening around them at that moment. Now, here's the good side about that. If you're famous and people know to look for that video, it's really great. They're going to catch it, they're going to follow it, you have to advertise you're going to do it. If you're not famous, you just you create a streaming video, then it's like having a, a program on television channel with watches, right? Because they don't get saved. They're not going to YouTube. Not, it's just it's a, it, it, like Instagram in a lot of cases. It's just there and then it's gone. And so it's just a little little vapor of video that existed for a small period of time in the space-time continuum. That if you had people watching it, great. If not, then it was it's not going to be have lasting value for you. So I'll be honest with you, we're not using this today. We're trying to figure out how to use this best for our company as well. But keep in mind that now people can do live streaming. You can be your own television station, your own broadcast service if you want to, using Meerkat or using Periscope. And the Periscope is a Twitter company. So. Okay, one last thing about this whole process. What you really want to do is you're not creating these just to create things. In our world, you're trying to create these videos, you're trying to create your entire content strategy, and I can't stress content strategy enough, and that's a combination of your videos, your images, your keywords on your website, your landing pages, paid sponsored ads you're doing, your billboards that have the CS at www. The whole idea behind everything you're trying to do is bring people either to your telephone number, of course, and a lot of things, but certainly down to your website. And you can track all of that. You can put analytics on your website that's going to tell you where these customers are coming from and then give you the best value and get your best ROI out of the content you're putting out there. Does that make sense? So all this goes into a funnel I and mean, you're tracking that funnel to make sure you're getting the best reward out of it. Uh, this is a little snippet that we used about, this is our little video here uh, that we said to bring people to our booth. So to your point, we shot this video in we did it in one take, I'm pretty proud of us. Yeah, but just on a smartphone in one of our conference rooms, we just thought it'd be a fun little look, and it's, it's yeah, worked. Well, Barbara will testify. She makes you feel very comfortable, doesn't she? So, Absolutely. Yeah, so you're not just not too uncomfortable. You know, don't use something once. If you're creating a video, use it a dozen times. You know, put it on your Facebook page. If you're on YouTube, put it on YouTube. If you want to take a snippet of it, put it on Vine, put it on Vine. If you want to send an email out about it, so think about, like we showed that funnel earlier, think about all those different web assets that you have. 
And how you can take a video that you're just creation, creating as a slice of life that took a minute to do, right? A minute and a half to do, basically, with an iPhone. And it's already brought quite a few people to the booth. It's gained more awareness. And it's going to be on Facebook and YouTube forever. So it won't be forever. It's a long time. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't but know the beauty that. of it, honestly, is that that video is in your hands. Whoever came and shot a video, that is simply, that's for you. You could push that out on your social media networks, put it on your website, share it with your mom. It's yours. So boom, you already did yourself a favor and shot a video. And if you haven't, come by our booth. We'll be there all day. They're really fun. Yeah, here's, here's how we reach out to people. We use LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram today, and YouTube is our primary source. We're just experimenting with Vine, so we're not really posting too much about that. We're using it as snippets as a teaser tool to do other elements. But, uh, you know, encourage you if, you, if you can, follow us. We'll follow you back. We'd like to learn more about what you all are doing in this community as well and try to do what we can to uh, you know, really communicate effectively on how to help you improve your business. Last but not least, that's her, that's me. Uh, she has her own handle, Angelo Rocca, on Twitter, and I have TNI Man as my handle on Twitter. So, uh, with that, that concludes the formal part of this presentation. Has this been, have you been getting something out of this? Is it beneficial? Is this giving you information? Good to have it for Okay, so. Uh, so, quickly, we have uh, time for questions. We can hang around. I think they're going to kick us out of here right afterwards. Yeah, yeah we can even hang around and answer questions afterwards and love to talk to you about what you're doing with them at DFA. So we saw some of that today. Pretty cool stuff. Any questions for Angela? Any questions for Kevin as a matter of fact about production? Yes, ma'am. So if you're gonna buy equipment, where do you start? You know, let's say you wanna produce some videos. I mean, how do you know what the best equipment to buy for an amateur? I would say it depends on, on how formal or informal you want the videos to be. If you are serious about it and you're willing to go, if you remember we had those three, um, the, the list of three, if you want to go full production, full blown, I would absolutely say just do your research. Ask, I mean, pick people's brains who are doing it in your community, in your city. Um, Kevin is a great source here. Tell you that um, sure. But believe it or not, there's so much you can do with very little equipment. This is our primary tool. We use our smartphones for about 85% of the videos we produce today. And then when we're doing something formal, like this presentation, then we want to get something with a little better yeah. power to it. And if you're doing interviews, one of the things you'll find, if you produce your own videos, one of the walls you're going to run into is sound. Yes. Right? Sound's always one of the big issues when you're doing your own videos. So it's very important that using one of these, that you do a little test to make sure you've got that set, maybe mic up in some cases. But in a quiet room, in a small quiet room where it's not cavernous, we use this for 85% of what we produce. And otherwise, I mean, uh, Kevin will be at the booth all day. Come by and tell you, he'll be happy to tell you what he's using and what kind of equipment that he's experimenting with. He's kind of a uh, tech nerd. And uh, can give you some feedback about what's working not working. About where to start? You know, honestly, start with a slice of life. Start with things that are you uh, business to consumer? You, uh, we're we're a residential contractor. Okay. So start with, oh my gosh, homes. I mean, there are more more videos on homes. Matter of fact, we have with the city our vice president of technology. Uh, Andrea, the house flipper, Venus. And I'm sure she can give you some feedback on, on uh, what video tools she's using and some of her searches on there. But basically, video is huge uh, in the real estate market and in, in the home construction and contracting market. But even just a little slice of life things, like the before and after factor that An Angela was talking about earlier, or in, even images, shots of before and after, or, or pictures of your team, or your crew, your truck, things you're really. Think about what's, what are you going to celebrate? And homeowners love having their house celebrated when it's finished, right? So video testimonials, before and after, your crew, your team, your customers, those can all be done off of an iPhone quick enough okay. without investing a lot of money. Now when you go to the next level, when you want more production, more sound added, more editing, then yeah, then be good to invest in equipment. Yes, ma'am. Are there any apps that you recommend for shooting videos that make it better quality, editing purposes, things like that? Um, I mean, that work well with Vine? You know, what, what you'll find is that we're, we're both the talent. We don't concern ourselves with things like production. However, Kevin, how about yourself? Any apps you're working with that you really like? Um, there's some really good photo editing apps, video apps. Um, I prefer editing on computers. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently using Mac. I'm using Final Cut Pro. But you can really get a lot of value out of just, you know, iMovie, which is, comes pre-installed, I think, on Macs now. And there's also Windows Movie Maker that's all available on PCs, if, uh, depending on which operating system you're with. That you know you can get 
pretty far with just those two free programs and there's a lot of free software. I use a free audio editing software to you know, mess with some audio as well that is available. So if anybody wants to stop by and you know, I can give you my information and we can touch base after the show. Yes, sir. Did you say that was done with a smartphone? <laughs> and an iPhone. Oh, an iPhone. Well, the, there's a generic term for iPhones and Android. <coughs> that's, oh. that's called a smartphone. Sorry. They're all HD. They're all great yeah. Many, great quality. many smartphones today can shoot quad HD, you know, the whole 4K. Yeah. They can shoot 4K video right from yeah. your that's pocket. That's why you should probably start playing with it. Play yeah. with it. Before you invest in a lot of equipment and things like that, see what's, see what's already in your pocket. And play with it. Yeah. And then see what you're yeah. shooting. Because, like Steve said, depending on what you're shooting, you're not going to have room for a crew all the time. So if you buy all that equipment and you have it, it's fantastic, but it might not work because I don't have it. We've done shoots again too, where even the quality of sound is still even the shoot. So sound is a good issue. So the way they're making these now, this is the this is the largest screen I could get without the toying get behind me on the road. You know what I mean? So now these screens are getting, getting larger. And one of the major intents of that, of course, is you can watch video, Netflix, even off something like this is really a pleasurable experience. Yeah, I would definitely say, like Andrew said, experiment with your phone right now. You don't have to download all the apps at this point. You click on video and just start capturing things. Because it's very simple. As you can see, we're capturing this whole entire conference with one cameraman and one camera. That's it. Even when we were shooting your video, Barbara, there were no lights, there were no mics, there was nothing. It was very simple, and you've got a great product out of that. So I would say, yeah, start with what you have, and then we're here beyond that. If you wanted, some, if you wanted to go full-blown and you know, find a production company, that's an option too. Anyone else? Any, uh, by the way, from this group too, any recommendations? I mean, if you're just doing video that want to make recommendations or make suggestions to the group as well, you're welcome to. You've got tools you're utilizing, if you've got a phone you like better than others, if you've got devices that, uh, or uh, software or, or platforms we haven't talked about, then you're sure welcome to suggest that. This is a great community to us as well. So, okay. Yes. There's an app Okay. Do something manipulation and we'll put some back on the YouTube and that's what what is it again? Sorry? Magic, but Magic with an Isto. Magisto. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. But Check that out. Anybody else? Anybody else have any suggestions or any ideas? Yes, sir. Yeah. Follow realseo.com. Real R E E L S E O dot com. I'm surprised you got heard of it. <laughs> well, a lot of the, I'm told all the time I haven't heard of Larry. R E E L S E O. Like movie bill. Okay. I have to take a look. Yeah. Anybody else? Sharing is caring. Any other? Uh, I haven't. <laughs> sorry, I don't get around. They don't let me out much. I don't get around much. Yes, ma'am. Actually, a question. How do you build momentum? So we have a couple of videos, but there's not a lot going on with them. Is it more about the quality of or is it more about quantity of production and doing more? Does that make sense? Yeah, actually those work pretty much hand in hand. So okay. the quality of SEO is a really big part of it. Okay. And you've got to make sure, I mean, creating a, a video is creating a video, right? But then taking that video and making sure that you're targeting it to the right audience and to that right audience you have the right keywords on it, and then you're putting it someplace you're not forced, right? You're putting it out there where people are going to find it. Those are really important elements. So even using, for example, transcripts, if you're putting videos on uh, YouTube, you can put transcripts on there as well. Okay. It's going to help. If you can take the content and make sure that you have the title captured properly, that you're tagging the video properly. Uh, SEO, by the way, today is as much a technical science as it is a marketing science. Uh, when there's a proper schema on how to actually go in behind your videos, make sure they're tagged right, and you've got the right SEO components to them so that the search engines find it properly. So, uh, and there's a scheme, if you're interested in that, that kind of thing. Uh, schema.org, S-C-H-E-M-A.org. has a lot of profiles on how you might want to label that. Yeah, Rick? I was going to add that, um, they did a video not that long ago that said on YouTube for over a year, Less than a thousand views, and then all of a sudden you got caught. Of course. Was this the right person? Retweeted it or mentioned it? 
within a month and have a two minute field. So, I mean, being out there doesn't always solve the problem. It's catching the, you know, it, it's promoting it to the right type of people. You know, yeah. you know getting somebody who's influential to retweet it or to promote it or get it out of your channel. Just finding just that critical mass of people out there. Yeah, finding, finding a community or a spokesperson or, or something. You know, the Property Brothers say they like your video. You're probably getting a lot of views now, right? But, but to a certain degree, though, that's accurate. Though. What Greg's saying is trying to, try to find those influencers in the industry. And you probably know a lot of those influencers here that could work with you to get your content out to be more strong. I would say, Tony, that timing is everything, too. If, if, it's, if you're getting geared up for a great new product that you're pushing out, it's great if you put that video out with just your YouTube link, that's fine. But tag it and make sure it's listed on you know other people's social media. I would definitely say, like Greg said, make sure the right people are aware of it, and then sort of let it ride. And momentum will come from that. It's kind of a snowball effect. But there's such a difference from just posting a video that's great, but posting it and tagging people or mentioning someone in it or hey, I thought you might like this. So you need other people as much as they need you to help push your product out, and then you'll have those great brand ambassadors, and then your momentum comes. We need to formally wrap up and pass our time here. Um, Ang Angela's cards are here, my cards here. Kevin's going to be at the booth. We have production questions on the question or things that he uses this technique. Uh, thank you all for being here.